Thank you for being with us. Our top story tonight, the Vatican officially excommunicates Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, the papal nuncio, to the United States from 2011 to 2016. The ruling comes after Archbishop Vigano defied a summons last week to appear before the Vatican office on the doctrine of faith. There, he was said to face charges of schism. After an ongoing confidential penal process that concluded on Thursday, Vigano was excommunicated and found guilty of schism, which is considered a canonical crime of refusal to submit to the authority of the Pope. It is also the most serious penalty a baptized person can receive being placed outside of the communion of the faithful of the Catholic Church and denied access to the sacraments. Archbishop Carla Maria Vigano was appointed papal nuncio to the United States in 2011. He is known for managing the Holy Father's 2015 visit to the United States, where Pope Francis canonized St. Junipero Serra outside the Catholic University of America and addressed the joint session of Congress for the first time. After this historic visit in April of 2016, Vigano turned 75 and then submitted his customary resignation letter. He was replaced by now Cardinal Christophe Pierre. But in 2018, Vigano released a bombshell report accusing the Holy Father of ignoring and failing to act on the now confirmed abuse allegations against former Cardinal and one-time Archbishop of Washington, D.C., Theodore McCarrick and called for Pope Francis's resignation. Vigano went into hiding that same year. A later Vatican inquiry cleared the Holy Father's actions related to the McCarrick scandal. Now, seven years later, the official Vatican process concluded Vigano's excommunication was based on his ongoing public refusal to recognize and submit to the Supreme Pontiff's rejection of the institutions he serves and questioning of the magisterial authority of the Second Vatican Council. Vigano rejected the process and the potential excommunication and did not present a defense of his actions to the Vatican. On June 28th, his social media statement further accused Pope Francis of heresy and schism over his promotion of COVID-19 vaccines and his overseeing of relations with China and the process to appoint bishops there. Vigano's excommunication can only be lifted by the Holy See. Joining us now from Rome is Frank Rocha, senior Vatican analyst for EWTN News. Frank, good to be with you. Um, so this is the most severe penalty that can be imposed on a baptized Catholic. What does the penalty of excommunication actually impose? Well, exclusion from the sacraments, exclusion from the liturgy, uh, and the person can't hold uh, church office. Uh, so th those are the major uh, restrictions. Yeah, and Frank, how unusual is it for the Vatican to declare a bishop or archbishop excommunicated? Well, it's very rare. I mean, the cases that, that come to mind and uh, about 20 years ago, Archbishop Malingo of Zambia uh, was uh, excommunicated for ordaining some bishops without permission of Rome. Uh, in the late 1880s, Archbishop Lefebvre, the traditionalist French bishop, was, exclu uh, was uh, excommunicated for the same reason. Uh, in this case, uh, it's uh, for promoting schism, fermenting schism, not by deed, not by uh, ordaining bishops, as far as we know, but by words, by uh, questioning the legitimacy of the Pope and by and of the Second Vatican Council. Yeah, and how did Archbishop Vigano, a senior Vatican official under two popes, uh, end up in this position in the first place? Yeah, that's right. I mean, when he was the second in command of the Vatican City State Administration under Pope Benedict, he was a whistleblower, so he was already already known as a vocal and combative personality. Uh, but then, when his role as uh, Pope Francis's envoy to the U.S., he helped plan the trip to the U.S. for Pope Francis in 2015. He helped choose bishops for the U.S. Uh, I don't think anyone could have predicted that uh, then after his retirement in 2018, uh, he would come out with this shocking accusation that the Pope had uh, basically favored uh, Cardinal. Theodore McCarrick, despite knowing his history of sexual misconduct, and he called on the Pope to resign, which was very shocking. And in the years since then, he's increased his criticisms. He's, he's accused the Pope essentially of heresy of, and of promoting LGBTQ agendas and environmentalist agendas and unchecked immigration, and he's linked him to Davos, the World Economic Forum, and, he, and he's criticized Vatican II. He's rejected Vatican II, even though he spent his entire career as a priest and bishop in the post-conciliar church, but he's apparently discovered that Vatican II was illegitimate, so his, 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 his criticisms have grown much more severe and extensive. 
And Frank, before I let you go, quickly, what do you think this case of Archbishop Vigano says about the state of the church today? Well, it certainly reflects some of the tensions that exist in the church uh, under Pope Francis. When Archbishop Vigano came out with his accusation and his demand for Pope Francis' resignation, several leading U.S. bishops came out in support of Archbishop Vigano, or at least vouching for his credibility and saying that his accusations need to be taken seriously. And that certainly wasn't—didn't go over terribly well at the Vatican. And, there, and as we know, there have been tensions between the U.S. many of the U.S. bishops and the Vatican. Uh, the other thing I think that's interesting is that uh, how we see church politics so to speak, uh, uh, converging with, intersecting with politics at large, secular politics. Archbishop Vigano became a supporter of President Trump. He started to weigh on on COVID vaccines and on the demonstrations in 2020 about globalism. So I think that's uh, the, we, we see church politics and, 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 and secular politics converging. I think that may be largely the effect of social media. But in any case, it's an interesting development. Yeah, indeed. Frank, thanks so much. We appreciate your analysis today. Frank Rocco, Senior Vatican Analyst at EWTN News. Thank you again. Thank you.